Okay, in this sound lesson, we are going to learn how to identify locations of compression and refractions in a wave graph. By looking at the waveform diagram, we can easily identify the regions of compressions and refractions in a longitudinal wave. However, if you are given a generic wave graph, it is more challenging to identify the regions of compression and refraction using it. It may be tempting to just identify regions of compression with the peaks and region of refraction of the trough of the wave. It may be correct or incorrect depending on the graphs given. There actually may be two types of wave graph that is, is given. One is pressure and distance graph. The other is displacement distance graph. We will talk about pressure distance graph first. For pressure distance graph, it is indeed correct that the region of compression corresponds to the peaks of the pressure wave. Likewise, the region of refractions are the trough or the lowest point of the waves. It is because the pressure is the, is the highest where the particles are most compressed, which is compression. Likewise, in refraction, the particles are more dispersed and thus have the least pressure. It is a bit more challenging to identify regions of compression and refraction for a displacement distance graph. Unlike pressure distance graph, the regions of compression are located where the displacement of the graph is zero. To complicate things further, the, re the regions of refraction are also at the location where the displacement is zero, as indicated on the picture over here. So, how are you going to identify and differentiate between compression and refraction? We we'll use this simple model to explain on how do we identify regions of compression and refraction into locations in displacement time graph. First, we must have some prior knowledge and understand the features of displacement for the particle. Displacement is the distance between the current position of the particles and its original position. And we assume that going right is positive. If a particle has moved to the right of its original position, like this blue one, it has a positive displacement. It also means that if the displacement of another particle is negative, it means that it is now on the left side of its original position as indicated in the red particle. Now, let's look at how the particles in its original position move to become regions of compression. Focus on the orange dot as it's the center of the compression. Notice that at the center of compression, the orange particle has zero displacement. Most of its neighboring particles actually move towards it. As an analogy, is that the orange particle in the center is so popular that the surrounding particles all come towards it, making it not able to move. So it forms a compression. Let's look at how the particles in the original position move to become regions of refraction. Focus on the black particles as it will be the center of refraction. Notice that all its neighboring particles are moving away from it as if they are running away from it. Another thing that you may notice that the particle at that is at the center of refraction also has no displacement. An analogy is that its neighboring particles are both trying to pull equally on its left and right direction and so that it actually stays in the original position. Let's look at the compression animation again. We then measure the displacement for each particle and plot them on the distance, displacement distance graph. These are the positive displacement, okay, as each of these particles have moved towards the right, and these are the negative displacement because each particle as compared to origin position has moved towards the left. And notice that they have different displacement. The light green has moved a lot. Likewise, this dark blue has moved a lot as compared to the red and yellow. And if you plot the graph of, you find that this is zero displacement, this is zero displacement, it will form a graph something similar to this. Thus, you will notice that a pattern will start to emerge that is similar to the wave pattern. We can first identify the location of compression and refraction where 
it is actually the displacement is zero. So this is a refraction, this is a compression, and this is also a refraction. Next is to identify whether is it a compression or refraction, we look at its neighboring particles or displacement sign. Let's look at the compression. If the left side neighbor has a positive displacement, so this is a positive displacement, it means it's displaced to the right. If the right side neighbor has a negative displacement sign, it means that it has displaced towards the left. Imagine that your left neighbor is moved towards right and your right neighbor moved towards left. This will create a very cramped situation and thus this is a compression. Let's look at a for refraction case. As for refraction, similarly, we measure the uh, its displacement and this time around, this all moved towards the left, so this has a negative displacement and this has moved towards the right, so it has a positive displacement. And again, you form the pattern and this is, uh, this is zero, zero, and this is also zero displacement, so you form a pattern like this. And it has a similar wave pattern. So for refraction, if the left side neighbor has a negative displacement, means that it moves towards the left, and the right side neighbor has a positive displacement, means that it moves towards the right. So imagine that your left neighbor moves towards the left and your right neighbor moves towards the right. This will create a situation where it's very sparse. So this is a refraction. In summary, in order to identify where the compression or refraction is if given a wave graph, we have to be clear which graph are we looking at. If it's a displacement distance graph, we know that the compression and refraction will be where the displacement is zero. So as indicated over here. And if we want to identify compression, we look at the immediate and left and right region. Okay, for compression, the left side would be positive displacement and the right side will be negative displacement. So these are the points that would fulfill the conditions. If you are identifying refraction, it will be the opposite. The left side would be negative displacement and the right side will be positive displacement. So these are the points that would fulfill the conditions. So negative, positive, negative, positive, and so on. So this will be the end of today's lesson. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.